anybody for fried rubber and pencils, anyone? No? Of course not. These aren't even fried. But it's good for writing stuff. Hi guys, welcome to a new episode on this channel. Today we will be talking about rocks and minerals. So let's get started. What are rocks and minerals? Well, rocks and minerals are the stuff that makes almost everything we use every day. Your TV screen, your phone that you might be using to watch your, the device you're using to watch YouTube and watch this episode, the frying pot right here, the, even the kind of superhero helmet I wear. I guess you can call that a superhero helmet. Or even the bottom of this frying pan, which is different uh, texture and different kind of formation from the others. That's kind of weird, isn't it? It's like the whole world is made from minerals. So, what are minerals made of? And what are rocks made of? First of all, I want to cover some misconceptions. A lot of people sometimes get this a lot. Usually they think that rocks aren't made from minerals. The minerals are rocks themselves because they seem to be like rocks. They're hard, they're sometimes smooth, sometimes, well, bumpy. Well, that's not the case. If you look closely at rocks, you can see that some crystals are inside them. While in crystals, or minerals, there aren't any minerals inside them. They're just one mineral. And now, here is the order of how things are made of. Rocks are made of minerals. Minerals are made from elements. Elements are made from atoms. And atoms are made from nucleuses and electrons. Nucleuses are made from protons and neutrons. Neutrons or protons are made from... You can't divide it further, so we'll have to end it there. So that's how it actually works. Once you think about this, you might see what it's happening here. How it's happening might be another question for another day. But today we'll be exploring rocks and minerals a bit more closely for now. There are different types of rocks and minerals. For all, we can compare them and categorize them by their properties. Color is a property. This is a sort of grayish white, some kind of brightness. And of course, it's like a mirror, only a little more fuzzier. The middle is like a mirror, by the way, only it just makes things more rounder. It's hard, and it's pretty hard to scratch. This part is pretty hard to scratch, but this, but the bottom part, it's pretty, it feels easily scratched. It feels easily scratched. There's even a hardness. Ow. And there's even how durable it can be. Also, it talks about what it's made of and what color it is and how heavy it is. That's all a lot of people think. And minerals are in the periodic table of elements, too. Uh, page 14. Gotcha. In the periodic table of elements, there is lots and lots of there. Most of the solids in the periodic table of elements are usually minerals. Calcium, calcium, and potassium are minerals. Silicon, actually, this is out for silicon. Where are you? Okay, silicon, aluminum, and zinc, copper, nickel, cobalt, iron, and yes. Sometimes, oh my goodness, sometimes uranium are even crystals. Iron, examples of iron, iron can be made into stuff are pots and pans. We even have a frying pan here, by the way. Anybody for roast paper? Anybody for roast paper, pencils, and erasers, and a Rubik's Cube? No? It's fried, deep fried, sunny side up. Still no? Of course. You're so picky. That's how a lot of people think about food. We think about food in different ways, but sometimes we think food a wrong way. We think that food doesn't have any minerals, or else we might be just scratching our bellies and all that stuff, scratching our bodies. But however, minerals, we don't, we do eat some minerals, but not in their pure form. We don't eat pure iron ore, definitely no, yuck, just 
scrunch up your stomach and make the acid go away. Black. We eat them in another, not a pure form, but in another substance. Now let's say that these red spots are iron. But if we let's say let's say that these black spots on this ruby cube are iron. But we don't eat it raw. We don't eat them like this. We eat them with combinations of other stuff that is more healthy to us. That's how a lot of people work. This is what regular iron might look like. But once we add the food in, it actually gives us a new look into the perspective of the world. We might even see how good they are and how iron is inside. Try this experiment. Get a magnet inside. Since iron is magnetic, you can try this experiment. Corn flakes have iron in them, and put this mag put a magnet inside with some corn flakes, mushed up, and then spin spin the thing that you that you put the corn flakes and the magnet on very fast. Then once at very very fast speed, once you stop it after a few minutes, like ten minutes or so. You see that there are some iron sticking onto it. It's the、uh, that's the iron inside the cornflakes. Yeah, cornflakes aren't magnetic themselves, of course. They're organic stuff, so that's why they aren't magnetic. But there is iron that is magnetic. Once you spin it, cornflakes get more mushy up, and the iron, some of the iron, get free. That's how it gets into the magnet. And that's where we'll end this show. So, if you want to learn more about rocks and minerals, I highly suggest that you search the web for it and play a few games on other people's websites about these rocks and minerals, and find out more about how minerals and rocks are made from. And I would highly suggest of a further study into the periodic table and how pots and pans are made. See you in the next episode. Shenhan out. Peace. Still try some Rubik's cube, okay? No. Ah. <sighs>